Okay, so Jacob 5. The Lord will recover Israel in the last days. The world will be burned with fire. Men must follow Christ to avoid the lake of fire and brimstone. Let's start the verses. Verse number one. And now behold, my brethren, as I said unto you that I would prophesy, behold, this is my prophecy, that the things which this prophet Zeno spake concerning the house of Israel, in which he likened them unto a tame olive tree, must surely come to pass. In verse number one, we see that Jacob has obviously read, he's obviously studied and pondered on Zenos' writings over and over again until he understood and felt the Holy Spirit telling him that this prophecy was true, telling him that it would come true. When we understand or we witness something with the power of the Holy Ghost, it becomes our testimony as well. It becomes something that we can prophesy about, that we can speak about, that we can spread the news about because we know internally that it is true. In this particular chapter, Jacob is pretty much summarizing the previous chapter, Jacob 5, where he walked us through Zenos' entire prophecy, his entire allegory about the olive trees. And then, and the day that he shall set his hand again the second time to recover his people is the day, yea, even the last time that the servants of the Lord will go forth in his power to nourish and prune his vineyard, and after that the end soon cometh. Verse number two, the day that the Lord starts his work of gathering is scattered Israel again, is the last time that the Lord will gather his people again. This is going to be the last time that he sends his prophets out to warn his people, to teach them, to lead them to the gospel and to the rightful path. And how blessed are they who have labored diligently in his vineyard and how cursed are they who should be cast out into their own place and the world should be burned with fire. Before the second coming, the, the people who served um, the Lord will be blessed and set apart and the ones who were unrighteous or, or wicked will be removed and sent to a place with other wicked and unrighteous people. And the world will be cleansed and purified with fire ahead of the thousand years of millennial rule under Christ. And how merciful is our God unto us, for he remembereth the house of Israel, both the roots and the branches, and he stretches forth his hands to them all the day long, and they are a stiff-necked and a gainsaying people, but as many will not harden their hearts shall be saved in the kingdom of God. We see the mercy of the Lord here, for he remembers his covenant people of Israel, both the Jews and the Gentiles who have joined the church and reaches out his arms to constantly save them, even though they are prideful, even though they are haughty and unwilling to listen to his prophets. The ones who don't harden their hearts in pride and are open to, re to receiving personal revelation from the Lord about the truth of the prophet's teachings will experience their own testimony and turn to the Lord and be saved. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, I beseech you in words of soberness that ye would repent and come with full purpose of heart and cleave unto God as he cleaves, cleaveth unto you. And while his arm of mercy is extended towards you in the light of day, harden not your hearts. Jacob begs and pleads with his people, telling them to please repent, see the truth, ask for yourself to know the truth and to cleave unto God as he cleaves unto you. The word cleave is, de is defined as stick to, to hold on to. Jacob uses the word here to tell us to stick to God the way he sticks to us, to follow him the way he follows you, to love him the way he, follow he loves you. Seek him constantly the way that he seeks you. And while he is willing to forgive you and be merciful, reach out to him and ask forgiveness without letting your pride and your stubbornness get in the way of your eternal salvation. Jacob asked the people to repent, to be humble and to ask God for forgiveness. He continues that if today, if you feel a witness of the Spirit telling you this is all true, don't be stubborn and not listen. For why would you want to lose out at your chance of eternal salvation because of your pride or your stubbornness? Jacob then reminds his people that if they acknowledge the witness that they feel, and they listen to the words of the prophets, leaders and other servants of God, study the gospel and listen to their own revelation from spirit, they're not likely to do evil or live in unrighteous ways and so will not be destroyed with the other wicked people at the second coming. Revelation from God through the Holy Spirit is available to every single one of us. And yes, that means you too. A large part of what we're reading over here, Jacob's message is just not for his own people. A lot of it, if you listen to it, if you read it and if you study it, 
you're going to realize that a lot of it is him speaking to you, to us as well. Behold, will ye reject these words? Will ye reject the words of the prophets? And will ye reject all the words that have been spoken concerning Christ? After so many have spoken concerning him and deny the good word of Christ and the power of God and the gift of the Holy Ghost and quench the Holy Spirit and make a mock of the great plan of redemption which hath been laid for you. Jacob asks them these questions. Are you going to reject or ignore my words today? Are you going to reject and ignore the words of all the prophets who have spoken the same thing through generations? Are you going to ignore the messages and the words that have been spoken about the birth and the ministry of Christ, even after so many people have testified about him? Are you going to ignore the personal revelation and the witness you can have of God through the Holy Spirit? And are you going to make fun of or cast aside the plan of salvation that the Heavenly Father has made to resurrect and reunite our spiritual and our physical bodies after death so that we can live with him? Imagine Jacob is asking you these questions today. How strong is your faith from which, through which you believe in the power of revelation? Are you doing all that you can do to listen to and then take action on what the prophets say to us today? Jacob then goes on to scold them, saying that, don't you know if you do these things, if, if you don't believe, if you make a mockery of the Holy Spirit and all the words that have been written, don't you know that on the day of judgment, you will be overcome with guilt and shame because you cast aside this gift that has been offered you. For if you do this, you will and you must be judged for what you have done and will have to live out your life with others who've made wrong choices like you. You will have to go to a place that will symbolically feel as horrible to you as an endless lake of fire, smoke and brimstone because you will be forced to stay away from all the goodness, the happiness and the joy that comes from with returning to Heavenly Father and to Jesus Christ. And you will feel deeply unhappy, tormented and distraught about that about that choice that you made. O oh, then, my beloved brethren, repent ye and enter in at the straight gate and continue in the way which is narrow until ye shall obtain eternal life. Jacob entreats his people that if this is not what you want, please turn towards God, be baptized and live a righteous life following the commandments of God. This is the only way that you can experience eternal life. And he, he says this really powerful statement which seems so simple, but it's got just got so much meaning and depth and power and an emotion in it. He says, oh, be wise. What can I say more? He reminds his people, he reminds us to be wise, saying that he can say no more than he said already. I want to share what Elder Holland has said about Jacob and his words, quote, he loved his people partly because they were also his family. He had taught them as clearly as he could and with all the energy of his soul. He warned them in no uncertain terms what would happen if they chose not to enter in at the straight gate and continue in the way that is narrow. He couldn't think of anything else to say, to warn them, to urge them, to inspire them, to motivate them. And so he simply and profoundly said, Oh, be wise, what can I say more? Brothers and sisters, be wise with your families. Be wise in fulfilling your church callings. Be wise with your time. Be wise in balancing all your responsibilities. Oh, be wise, my brothers and sisters. What more? What can I say more? End quote. How can you be more wise in the way that Jacob asks you to right now? How can you be more wise in the way that Elder Holland asks you to right now? How can that wisdom that you get affect and influence your choices or actions. And then Jacob goes on to say goodbye to them. He's saying, I'm saying goodbye to you until we meet again on the day of judgment in the court of God before the Lord Jesus Christ, where he judges each of us for the way that we have lived on the earth. Jacob ends by remarking that that day of judgment will bring fear and dread to all the wicked.